Hey Gators, today we are gonna start the first part of your ice cream cone value project. So what we have to do first is we need to draw our ice cream cone ice cream. So we are going to start off by using lines that we've talked about before. We're going to do kind of like a frowny face curve. It goes all the way up or a rainbow curve, just depends on how you wanna look at it. And then we're going to do kind of curvy cloud-like lines that go all the way around, just like the bottom of an ice cream cone. And then we're gonna do another one. And we're gonna do about six of these. Alright Gators, I'm back and now we have everything that we need for our painting portion. So I have a paintbrush, I have my watercolors, I have a little bowl of water, and then I also have some paper towels just so I can dry my brush if I need it. We are going to learn a little bit about value and how to paint that value. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start off by wetting one of our colors. So you choose what color ice cream you want. Um, I'm going to go with blue, so I'm gonna take some of my water with my brush and I'm gonna start to form a puddle in the blue paint. Okay, and the reason we want this puddle is because we want our blue to stay wet through the process of our painting. All right, I've got a pretty good puddle in there. Now I'm going to wash my brush off. I'm gonna keep my brush in the water and I'm gonna start to paint water on top of my first ice cream cone. Okay, now my paper is a construction paper, so it's not the best for watercolor. But what you can do is you can use any old printer paper and it will work pretty nicely for this project. All right, and as I'm adding water, I'm now gonna go back and add on just a little bit of my blue. The reason I wet this first was I don't want the blue to take over on my paper so much. So I'm gonna dip in and I'm gonna start to add just a little bit of blue and I'm gonna spread that blue out. Okay, we want that blue to be nice and light. You do not want that blue to be really dark. So we're gonna spread it out as we go. And we're gonna end up cutting these out, so it's okay if you go outside of the lines. All right, we're gonna use some more water to spread that blue around. And like I said, we're gonna cut these out, so don't worry if you go outside of the lines on this. All right, now for our next one, we want it to be a little bit darker. So we are going to not paint this with just water this time. We're gonna go straight with color and we're gonna spread our color out, okay? And as I'm painting, I'm gonna start to fill up. And remember, you can go outside of the lines, that's okay. And we wanna spread that blue all the way around. We don't wanna go super duper dark just yet. So I am dipping into my water, back into my puddle of paint, and then I'm spreading it out into water, puddle of paint, and spreading out. If your puddle starts to get really thin, you wanna keep adding more water to it, okay? You wanna make sure that that puddle stays there. We don't want that puddle to disappear. All right, now we're gonna keep doing the same thing, but this time we're gonna use more paint. So I went from my water to my puddle, and now I'm gonna start using my puddle paint. Awesome, oh, my puddle's starting to get dry, so I need to add more water to it. So let me finish this one, and then I'm gonna add more water. If it gets too dark, you just always add water to it. Good, now you can kinda of see how we're going from light to medium to a little bit darker. Right now we're in our mid-range, but my puddle is all dried up, so I need to add more water. You always do this with your brush. Okay, now I'm gonna use that puddle again, and this time we're gonna go a little bit darker, so we may not wanna spread it around as much. When your puddle runs out, what do you have to do? That's right, you're gonna add more water. So I'm gonna keep using my puddle. Oh, my puddle's starting to dry up. I'm gonna add more water. But if you notice, I'm not going from my water to the paper. I'm going from my water 
to the puddle and then to the paper because we want to use all of that color that's in our puddle. Alrighty. Oh, my puddle's starting to disappear again. Now these two look very similar. We want to make this a little bit darker. So we're going to go back just with some of our puddle and start to darken up some of those other areas. All right, my puddle disappeared, so I need to add more water again. And now you can make your ice cream any color you want. I would definitely try to stay away from black and brown, um, but you can use purple, orange, yellow. Uh, if you use yellow, it's probably gonna be a lot lighter, so you want, may need to add a little bit more yellow. All right, I'm gonna use my puddle again. I'm gonna start painting. Now we should be getting pretty close to our darkest shade of ice cream. Okay, which sounds kind of silly, but our darkest flavor, our blueberryest flavor of them all, our blue raspberry, whatever flavor you like. And then we are going to cut these out once they're dry. Okay, oh, my puddle is starting to run out again. Good, really use that puddle. And now once you have these last two painted, you're gonna wanna go back and almost paint them again because we want these two to be the darkest. And the reason they're gonna be the darkest is because they're gonna be the bottom of our value, meaning they have the most color and most hue. If your puddle dries up, you always need to have water in your puddle, even if you're still doing your darkest colors. Good, and I've gone back over this one about three times now. So our last one, we may have to do about four. Alrighty, and now we are on our last ice cream scoop. And remember, you can start off painting it with extra water, but then we always wanna go back straight to that puddle for these darker ones. And when your puddle dries up, you gotta add more water. Puddle's drying up, here comes my water. Good, and now this one is my darkest one, so I am gonna wanna go over this a couple more times. And then we wanted to try to get even darker than that one. So now my paint puddle is pretty dry, and I'm painting basically just with the wet paint that's inside of there. Now, when you do that, you don't wanna dig your brush in. Let me get this so you can see. You don't wanna dig your brush in, okay? You just wanna swirl your brush all the way around the edges, so that way you still keep a nice, clean paint surface. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. If you dig your brush in, it's gonna create this big old crater right in the center of your paint, and we do not want that. We wanna paint the middle of this too. Add some more water to it. Good. You guys are doing an awesome, awesome job. And this should be our darkest one. Now, one thing you can do is you can go back with a Sharpie if you'd like and outline them when they're dry. Um, I'm gonna leave them just as they are and then I'm gonna use scissors to cut out. So I will post the next step in the next video for you so that you can start to build your ice cream cone. So for day four, you are drawing your ice cream dollops and then you're gonna paint them in lightest all the way to darkest. All right, Gators, we're gonna do the second part of our ice cream cone for day four and that is going to be the actual cone itself. Now we've been talking about textures, actual texture, which is what it feels like versus implied texture. Now implied texture is going to be what you think it feels like, kind of what it looks like. So the look of it is telling you what it feels like. So we are gonna do our ice cream cone. We're gonna do a long upside down triangle. And I'm using my loose pencil grip that we've talked about so that way it's kind of sketchy we don't need to make it super perfect now for our texture we're gonna work on that cross hatching texture and we talked about that before so we are going to start doing lines that are parallel 
to our edges. So I'm gonna do parallel lines. They're gonna be diagonal, going all the way across my ice cream cone. And then we are going to cross hatch this so we get that ice cream cone texture. Now I've done all my lines this way, so now I'm gonna come across here and I'm going to cross hatch this way. I'm using almost my whole arm back and forth to do this motion. Alrighty. Okay, now hopefully you saved your watercolors. So now we're going to paint our ice cream cone. So I'm going to, I used blue for the first part. Now I'm going to use brown for my ice cream cone. So again, we are going to get our brown wet. We're going to put a puddle in there and then we're just going to paint on. Okay, and we want those lines to see through so we don't want our paint to be super dark. And if you don't like how your lines aren't showing through, you can always go back with Sharpie later and you can outline those lines if you'd like. So if you want, certain parts can be darker than others to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, and then once you finish painting this cone brown, we're gonna wait for it to dry and we will cut it out for our next lesson tomorrow. See you later, Gators.